Oh, fucking tits. Fucking two stroke weed whacking knobhead. <laughs> My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop. Let's see if hopefully the uh, microphone will wipe out most of that. Fucking god horrible noise. Right then, so let's get to it. So, um, when we were, when I was doing, uh, when we were at this stage for the uh, My First Engine Teardown uh, video series, um, a lot of people were asking about the bearing shell. So, as you can see that this bearing shell here has a groove in it where this one doesn't. And this one sat sat there, and this one sat there, like so. And as you can see, this is a plain, we'll call it a plain ball, we'll just go with that. And then this one's a grooved bearing shell, this was a plain one, grooved, plain one. And a lot of people were asking about this groove, what is this groove for? So usually I do the master of zoom thing right now, but we're going to try a new thing, which is... Oh, burping, excuse me which is the master of magnification. So let's try that out. So, master of mag. <laughs> there we go. So, this is the master of magnification. As you can see now that I've magnified this, we can see a lot clearer. Um, so this is a groove shell bearing. So there's a few things we need to go over very quickly. Um, while I'm yappering on, you can try if you don't know or if you think you know, because a lot of people think they know why this is like this, but they actually don't, or I've heard loads of explanations. In the comments, there was loads of explanations that were fucking all over the place. So one of the things I want to talk about first is something that we call the LD ratio. Um, it's also called the aspect ratio. And what that is, it's two numbers to do with um, hydrodynamic bearings, which is what these are. These are oil-fed pressurized oil fed systems and the bearing in in a sense is there really for startup and to maintain um, the oil pressure at the bearing but if we get a tape measure out the ld ratio is the length of the bearing so this is a hundred and well it's 110 ish <laughs> 110 millimeters and 190 across and if we get a ratio of that, actually it was 115, what the fuck am I talking about? Jesus Christ, come on. Um, oh, start again. 115 divided by 190 equals uh, 0 0.6, which is quite high already. So the uh, LD ratio, or the aspect ratio of this bearing is uh, not 106, 0 0.6, Jesus Christ. So nominally it's 0 0.6 and you can't really fucking see that. I can't really see that, never mind you lot seeing that. But anyway, um, as the bearing is across its length. Now, uh, why is this important? This is all to do with, well, a load of things. There's a thing called the uh, Sommerfeld number. A uh, guy called, I think it was Ar 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 Arnold. Yeah, Arnold. I was going to say Arnie. <laughs> Arnold uh, Sommerfeld basically came out with this when looking at fluid dynamics and hydrodynamic bearings and stuff like that um, which gives you uh, kind of it basically gives you um, it's very important because it helps you do an oil analysis because it's all about the speed of the shaft the LD ratio it's all about how concentric the shaft is mm, that gets a bit muddy um, because one thing that's hard to calculate also the load that's applied to it so on and so on and the viscosity of the oil stuff like that that is something i'm gonna to have to break down so you because i could just blurt it all out but you'll go straight over your head and then there's um petroff's number oh petroff's uh, law which is again about the concentricity of the shaft and there any road that's just to keep the geeks happy that's something if you want to go and tinternet that and learn a bit more ahead of what i'm doing these videos of the pace i'm doing these videos so on and so forth there you go there's a few numbers for you and i'll put the names up of stuff as i'm saying them right so um so there's two things we have to basically understand and it's this uh the ld ratio the aspect ratio of how wide this how long this bearing is and how wide it is um if you have quite a long bearing it means that the uh length of this the surface area this is greater which means that if you apply the same load, let's just say you apply, 
I don't know, 100 kilos um, of load, so a thousand newtons thereabout. If you uh, thereabouts, if you apply a thousand newtons of force to this, the bigger the surface area, the lower the pressure is at every square centimeter, every square meter, every square inch, whatever, whichever units you want to use. Um, which means it's not as hard on the oil. It also means that the oil is a bit cooler. If you reduce the surface area, and in a sense that's what we're doing, we're cutting out this groove. If you reduce the uh, surface area and your clearances are quite tight and all the rest of it, it means there's more load on the oil, which means that the oil film clearance is uh, smaller, which means basically you're squishing the oil more and the shaft is. I've got nothing, I've got anything bigger circle wise. Not really, I'm looking for like a biscuit tin or something. Basically, if you look at it edge on like this, if your shaft is closer, then basically what's going to happen is, is that there's more load applied to the oil. It means it gets hotter. So by reducing this, you're actually making the oil hotter. However, the reason why these grooves are in here is because of heat. Um, oil, you know, not only is it a good lubricant and all that shit and takes away crap and the debris and all that rubbish, it's also an excellent coolant and it's a coolant where we need it right where the metal meets the metal kind of thing. So the reason why these bearings have these grooves in is because of heat and a lot of the times you'll find these bearings they'll be, um, sometimes it'll be a plain one and then a grooved one. So it doesn't have to be a groove all the way around, it'll just be like this. And uh, this is basically just to help cool and then supply enough oil as well as, if you get what I mean. So it's a bit of both. Now obviously by reducing this groove you are going to slightly increase the temperature, however the cooling effect you get from all of this excess oil basically just living in here. So she sprays out into here, lives in this groove, picks up a lot of heat and then basically squidges past. So why, one of the other reasons, not why, one of the other reasons why the LD uh, ratio matters or the aspect ratio is because it's your feed surface area to um, squish, to basically bleed off, to uh, you know, losing your oil, your oil flow rates, because obviously if you have a very, very thin bearing and a large diameter, then the bearing is going to squish out. And these ratios, about one, so just say if you had a, a, a 200 by 200, almost like a square um, shaft, then all would be good. Um, if you go lower, and this is lower, you know, this is a 0 0.6, as is like this. If we actually look at this size, um, what have we got? We've got 50 there, and then obviously we've got our, what was it, 190, 190 there. If you work that out, okay, now it's going to be about 1 point, 0 0.25, isn't it? So 50 divided by 190, yeah, 0 0.26, so just over a quarter. But you have got two of them, yeah, you know what I mean? So you're basically just losing this strip. But it is for cooling. Now, you might think, well, how come it's for cooling? Then let me just put this bloody gigantic thing away. How come it's for cooling? Well, in our setup for this, um, all our bearings, you know, they're supporting the weight, the total weight of the shaft, so all the way across this. Let me just pull this better into view. So all the way across this like this, so you think, well, it's equally distributing the load across all of these bearings. However, for these two and these two, we have that rocking couple where one piston's up, one piston's down. That's an extra element that's basically in that. So this bearing, these bearings here, these two bearings have to deal with not just the load that's applied to them, but also this rocking couple. And the problem with the rocking couple is that um, you're basically lifting one side of the shaft out, so all the oil squidges out, this side's going down, then it's a quick reverse, a flip reverse, a flip reverse, a flip reverse. And this actually, you know, puts a lot of stress on the oil, so this oil gets hotter. So during testing and stuff, they could find that um, these bearings uh, fatigue, so they basically die quicker because they're getting hotter. Um, you know, and you can also do just thermocouple measurements where you basically just measure the heat of the block and you'll see these, um... oh, what do they call them now? I fucking forgot, it's just li literally completely left me. These, um... <sighs> no, it's gone. These sections, <laughs> these sections of the block will be hotter than these. And it's not like some guy goes in and goes, oh yeah, that's hotter than that. Literally, you know, you'll, you can do a thermal analysis or you can literally just do it and then record it. Um, so they're basically 
added extra passages in here, a larger volume of oil to try and soak up as much of that heat before it gets squished out and pissed off. Um, and you'll see that there's quite a few bleed holes in it. So if you actually look at the, the feed, there isn't a feed in this one, it must be in the other casing. There's a passage underneath this bearing. So you can see the oil, Let's see how well you can see that. Master Zoom, I can't magnify this, I don't have a giant casing. <laughs> uh, where are we? So you can see in this bearing here, this one, that the oil is allowed to snake around. What's it like in the other casing? Not the same thing. There's a passage that goes all the way around. So the oil will basically come in from the bottom. It goes round this channel. So it basically soaks up all this heat. And if this is being cooled, then by definition, this is being cooled because this is sat in there like so. And then all these little holes here, you can see that they basically um allow the oil to soak through you know basically the soak through there soak through there soak through there there's actually another three almost identical passages on this and then it sits in this channel and then it basically just gets squidged out either side and pisses out and then drops back down into the sump Let me zoom you out a bit so you get a bit more of an idea with well, these bearings they they have the same oil feed these plain ones let me get that one that's a bit easy these bearings here have this same channel, they have this same oil feed that basically goes round the back of the bearing. Um, ooh, crunchy. <laughs> um, goes round the back of the bearing, helps cool the bearing, and then eventually just pisses through this hole, and then, like you say, seams straight out. Um, so yes, one of the main reasons, or the main reason of to, to have these grooves in these bearings, just like these back grooves, these are front grooves, just so it can hold that little extra capacity of oil and um, help with cooling, just literally internal cooling. Uh, one thing that was said in the comments from this video back when, a month ago, whenever it was, oh, fucking hell, let me just get that cover out, is someone said, oh, if you look at this bearing, if you look at the bearing shell, it looks like it's spun. And no, it hasn't. Um, so what what people say about spun bearings and stuff like that um, spun bearings are an absolute fucking disaster and that's when the bearing just spins in the casing and what that's doing is that's just wearing out your fucking casing you can have your oil pressure fluctuate all over the place usually there's debris and wear and it just yeah turn, turn, turns your engine to shite so what they have is they have these tangs uh, where are we sat there so the tangs sit in there and on the other side of the casing there isn't this tang and basically so the casing in a sense traps that little tang to stop it from rotating what you can see here these marks you can see here that is literally uh, just the bearing being squished that is the bearing one when the crankshaft went bang and the, the crankshaft goes down like this um, the oil pushes against the bearing, the bearing pushes against whatever's behind it, usually there's a very thin film of oil because obviously it's been bled from the back, and it basically just squishes it. So what you can see here is just squish marks. That's not a spun bearing. How do you know it's not a spun bearing? When you look at the casing, you can kind of see shit marks that are the same, almost. I don't know how well this is going to come out. Um, you can see shit marks that almost match up to these shit marks if you get I mean if you look at there you can see there's a shit mark there and a shit mark there and there's a shit mark there I don't know how well this is going to come out there's a shit mark there and a shit mark there and they all basically just match up when you see spun bearings number one is your tang will be fucked right so that tang will be basically squished flat you can see that tang's protruding all is good it'll have some wear on that tang as well you'll also see on this side where they've actually pressed it that that'll be all crippled and fucked and you'll see some it's just dirty horrible burn scratch marks if you look at that that's beautiful you can see you still see the horn marks and when they pass the line home through this um if i got it into shot you'd be able to see that'd be a good one that wouldn't it fucking hell so uh yeah you'd, you'd you can still see the horn marks so these are crisscross horn marks just as they pass the line home through it and uh, yeah there's no uh, sign of it usually looks like burning I'll see if I can get a picture stick a picture up of a spun bearing it usually looks like complete shit so no if you see skid marks and if you look at all the others zoom you out a bit 
Um, the others have these same marks. So you can see in the center that the bearing is nice and clean. And that's because there's this fucking groove in the back of it. And you can actually see, even see where there's the imprint. You can see there the hole. How well can you see that? So you'll see in that clear bit in the middle, fucking there, there, that's correct. Just next to the hole, there's a hole impression, and that's that hole impression in the casting. If you can just see that. I'll try and turn it that way. God, fucking, it's not coming out very well, is it? How about that? There we go. So you can see that hole impression there. So that is basically just the bearings. When we went to Santa Pod, we saw the squish of the bearings. You can actually measure them. Now, very quickly, just to finish off, this whole um, concept of uh, this whole concept of um, this oil clearance, this oil clearance and your length to uh, your LD ratio, stuff like that. Yes, it does increase. It increases with wear, stuff like that. Generally, what happens is is that if you have too tight, and it's very important that you don't go tight. If you go too tight, the oil overheats and your bearings will fail in fucking no time. You know what I mean? Um, it's just it's just not very good. Generally, the idea of fucking around with oil pressures and stuff like that is generally a bad idea. Um, yeah, you know, just do the specs. Always do the specs. One thing I, one thing I will add just before I go is that um, people are saying about plastic gauge and want the uh, silicon sealant or you didn't put silicon sealant on it in these regions stuff like that if you look at the book or if you look at i'll get the manual actually if you get the manual if you look silicon sealant or the sealant that they want you to use goes round here round here round here it does go on the end ones the end caps round here round here um not there not there and there just round there it doesn't go here and here it doesn't go any of these cam caps here, um, these actual saddle sections of the block. It doesn't go on here, and you can see it's fucking covered in Harlemar and rubbish. It doesn't go on here. There is no point sealing oil from one side of the other to two oil sides. This here has the clutch, so there's no point sealing this little bit. There's no point sealing this entire section. It's only the bits to the outside world that you put sealant on. But as you can see, they've fucking put it on here. What is the fucking point? spastics you know what i mean absolute spastics it is important that you read the manual people just don't fucking bother and go silicon sealant everywhere you know what i mean look at it it's fucking everywhere especially on these bolt holes it's not required people say oh it stops oil going up the bolt holes and all the rest of it well these surfaces should be flat together there should be no way in and even if it did then there's the head of the bolt to contend with Fucking you know, it just makes me laugh. People just bod shit to pieces. And it's so fucking simple because it's in the fucking book. Actually, give me a second. Dropping every time. Every time. Right then. Here we go. So even in the fucking Haynes manual, right? Let's see if I can master of zoom it and get this in there. Even in the Haynes manual, it shows the shaded area to apply the sealant. It's not in the fucking middle, and it's not between the fucking clutch housing. This is the wrong casing to this one. It's actually the um, bottom casing. But anyway, it's not between the clutch and the fucking... Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> fucking dumb asses. But, you know, you can't fucking tell them. People just see a see, people just see a mating surface and go fuck it. We're just gonna slap sealant all over it. You know, more's the better, more's the better. Stuff like that. Any road. So yes, cooling. This is the main reason. When you have bearings that are under more stress, and it's usually through testing and stuff. Don't think, oh, I'm off to go out and get some fucking shell bearings. It it has to be calculated. And like I say, um, Sommerfeld numbers, stuff like that, or um, Petroff's bloody equation law. You know, uh, oil viscosity, um, speed of the shaft, uh, th the, th the concentricity is a, the weird one, um, which is difficult-ish to work out. You, always, you already have to know your load, stuff like that. Or probable loads that the bearing and shaft interface is going to be or going to be under, you know what I mean, stuff like that. Any road. Uh, hope that makes sense. <laughs> and I'll see you in a bit.